Mason's, if not the smoothest backhand player on tour, it's top two or three. Uh, he's just a joy to watch. He plays his brand of disc golf every time he goes out and plays, and he keeps it down the fairway, makes a lot of putts. What's not to like about that? Luke definitely has good memories from here from a couple years ago, coming very close. Second place finish uh, at that time was really good for Luke. And now moving forward, the next one above that is first. And, and Luke's been close a few times, so I think he needs to learn from his past mistakes and see where that gets him tomorrow. Uh, last year was weird. I I lost that cash streak that went on for 15 years, and it, and it did hit me pretty hard. And I thought, oh, now I'm free. And now I'm gonna play more aggressive brand of disc golf. And I tried, and I'm not good at it, it turns out. And now I'm playing how I wanna play, which is how I played for the other 15 years. But I'm still shocked because it's been really bad weather. I didn't have any warm up tournaments. I'm as surprised as probably anybody to be playing this well. Um, and just super excited because last year was kind of a drag. Without a doubt, Gannon is the safe bet going into. Sunday. I mean, clearly head and shoulders on the lead card, the best player. Somebody who can take control of that card and string a lot of birdies together. If he does that, he's going to apply a lot of pressure to the field, and the field knows that as well. Hello and welcome to final round coverage from the 2024 Waco Annual Charity Open presented by Prodigy. We are back out at Lake Waco, just 18 holes left for this first Elite Plus event of the year. And you're watching Joe Mays Pro with Nate Sexton, Jeremy Collin, and Paul Ulibarri. Uh, I mean, the, the card has, like you said, Paul, in the intro, a, a clear superstar with Cannon Bird, but it's Waco. It's always tight. We've got a big golf course, a lot of out-of-bounds and anything can happen. This is gonna be an incredibly dramatic round. I cannot wait to get into this because it, this course is, it's growing on me in a big way. I, I, you know, when we play a course like this blind, we don't know what's gonna happen, but then throughout the course of the, the week, it, I think it's a really solid course and it's gonna be a great finale. We've got Gannon Byrne in first place, tied with Luke Humphreys. Both, well, Luke is the Prodigy player here at this Prodigy event. We got Mason Ford a great technical player, but also can hold his own in the open courses. Most notably when he won in Nashville, very open course. And we've got the savvy vet, <laughs> Nate Sexton out here coming from a slushy Oregon off season, not playing any tournaments and just bringing the noise. It's gonna be awesome to commentate on you today, buddy. Yes, it is. and. Let's get started with hole one here. Par four, 698, out of bounds right, out of bounds left. Little gap off the tee. You can throw a stall shot over the right-hand side of those trees. You can pierce a sidearm flex shot up the gut or just go for the big straight shot. Either way, you're going to be left with this well-guarded green. Sidearm approaches from the left side into that little gap, and this is a good little view for what you want to do with the backhand. Welcome to the 2024 Demoted. Prodigy <laughs> Presents Waco Annual Charity Open. It's now time for your MPO lead card. First on the tee, representing Discmania, put your hands together for Gannon Byrne. Customary fist daps there. Gannon looking to assert his early dominance as all top players try to early in the final round. Hole one, pretty docile though. This is a hole that you really feel like you must get the birdie on. That drive is perfectly down the middle. That's exactly what you're looking for. Put your hands together for Luke Humphrey. Luke, a former runner up here at this event, Waco, before we added the long golf course, but still he's got history here at Waco. Comes out a bit low, but still going to have a shot into the green. Probably 400, you think? Yeah, maybe, yeah, right maybe a little less. Yeah, maybe a little less. Mason Ford! I like how Mason 
will hold the disc almost in one spot and just get his body around the disc and then pull through. He reaches back just a little bit, but it's mostly just getting his body around it. And then look at the shape of that flight. That's just beautiful. What he does, man, he's just an absolute technician of getting the full flight out of all of his discs with a real quiet mode. Representing end of a champion disc. Put your hands together for Nate Sexton. Was there any inkling at all? Did you even consider the Thunderbird Roller? No, not seriously. Not I wanted seriously. to. I mean, for the fans, I want to, but I kept telling myself, don't be crazy. And then I got a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that is a heavy turn on the forehand. If it's clean, might get back in bounds. It does. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little too much drama. A great spot to land, but not where I was aiming it. It got a little more flip than I intended. Luke just needs this to get swinging left. Yeah. Okay. And it doesn't quite pull all the way down into the circle. Still 40, what, seven feet away? Yeah, at, ma at most. How much you got here? 200? Maybe? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, a little dud. Yeah, it was just kind of a lazy shot. I wanted it a little flatter, try to embrace the skip, and it got so much hyzer that it didn't really skip at all. A little chip shot here for Gannon. Mm -hmm. And he also finds an obstacle. That's still, what, 18 to 23 feet, something like that. On the nose, I'd say. And this is as easy as it gets. After that big drive, mm -hmm. Mason able to just go easy putter. So not as routine as you'd like to have for the entirety of the card. Some putts need to be made. I do like this distance here for Luke. I was talking about that in the previous round. Yo, just a bit high. Good commitment, though. Yep. That's a tough one when you have the head left to right cross because you don't know if it's going to drop you or lift you. And just a little bit lacking on the commitment. Good effort, though, as you instructed me to say. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Gannon in left side low. Would you call that one a zap there, Nate? I would. I would. Yeah. Luke coming back for his par. Oh, no, 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 no. Birdie for Mason. Yeah, there, there were only, uh, I think, I think, that, I think that's the only bogey in the field on the hole. And the, there were two players that went out of bounds that were able to scramble for their par, but that's the only bogey for the day. And this is after a cut line of the top... 39 plus ties. Check in with Casey White on the big tee shot of two. No need to watch that one. That's, That's crushed. Plenty. Okay. Maybe not crushed, but safe. Probably in the 400 neighborhood to the pin. I like that it's hyzering. It needs to get down that slope. Looks like it does. Yeah, it's C2. So far, he hasn't blown us away with either one of the shots, but the putt is all you really need sometimes. Rocking his new custom gear, sporting the Boston Bruins. That birdie will separate Gannon from the tie with Luke Humphreys. One shot over Mason. 
level two par four 785 about 400 ish feet of water carry to start you off and then sweeping here to the left with ob down the left side the whole way there is an ob line up on the right side as well though it's pretty rare to see that come into play in any meaningful way it's pretty generous over there so it's just about getting in position giving yourself a chance to either take that hyzer we saw from casey or play a turnover or a forehand down the water's edge. I think it's a solid par four. I yeah, think I it's a too. really good hole. I think it's it's got the layup option if you just want to play it for the par, but you're not really going to see many players do that unless you're faced with a headwind. And fortunately this week, we never had to deal with that. Not while we were here at Lake Waco. I think it's one of my favorite holes on the course. Yeah, I agree. I, it's, it's a good distance for two shots. Keeps you honest with the OB on the left side. Watch how quiet this is. Just a couple steps, and then yep. how about a little hyzer flip, late turn. Pretty aggressive, too, man. He really gets a good move behind it. That, that 400 clearance is not even close to a problem. I think the only thing I don't like about the hole is the follow-through is a little sketchy. I mean, you could yeah. – yeah, clod hoppers like myself, you could find yourself in the drink. Oh, no. Did not get the flip I was looking for out of that one. Read a little headwind, and I think I made a bad disc choice. So that's a progression to the drop zone, which is the FPOT pad? Correct. Luke getting full flex and just crossing over the line. Looking to bounce back from the early three-putt. Just probably trying to throw it inside 300 feet so you can have a little sexy bird into the green. I'm yeah, guessing. not really any other option, to be honest, yep. from there. How far do you think it is from the FPO pin to the basket? I would. Like, I mean, is there, is, is, is like an Anthony Burrell? I know that we always oh, state his name. Is he going for that? He might. I didn't really like oh, I didn't really, shot for Gannon. Yeah, that is nice. I didn't really look at it with a critical eye because mm. it's certainly more than 500. Right. Like it wasn't yeah. a shot that I was considering in any way. But I, yeah, I would think it's got to be it's close to 600 feet. Big shot for Luke here to try to get things going in the right direction. And keeps that one wide. He's going to find himself just outside the circle. Like you said, Paul, it's a spot he likes to find himself. Ooh, I like this. I like this, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect shot. I'm trying to think. I don't think I know anybody who has that low release like Luke on the backhand. Very unique to hit his own style. There's a lot of disc golfers to choose from, too. Yeah, sure. There you go. Oh, well, sit down, little bugger. <laughs> Get things back on track. Luke steps that one in perfectly. Yeah, I just don't see him missing two of the exact same putts in a row. Yeah, they're both slightly downhill as well. Mm -hmm. Even though the other one is another 8 to 10 feet past that one, it's the same putt still. I mean, the, that same energy is making right. that putt from 8 feet back. Now, probably the nerves have settled a little bit after the bogey as well. If they hadn't, they have now for yes. sure. Now you're playing disc golf. So when the leader again, it starts off birdie birdie and you start off par bogey, it's certainly not what you want, but you're certainly not out of it still by any means, but you got your work cut out for you. Yeah, absolutely. Not the start I was looking for. Especially when it's such a calm day. I mean, this is one of the things that we talked about over and over in practice is, okay, the course is calm today, but it's not going to be in the tournament. You know, the wind is always coming yet. It just never really showed its ugly face out here on this course. It's been calm pretty much both rounds, except for after the weather delay during round two. Yeah, and that makes this hole a lot easier with no wind. 
hole three, par four, 678, you're gonna be, be seeing big turnovers that get over those guardian trees once you clear the water. From there, you'll be left with probably under 300 feet into this green and there's out of bounds to the left of it, probably with well within 25 feet for sure. Yeah. At the closest spot, maybe even 15 to 18 feet. Mm -hmm. Really, the more right you can work this tee shot, I think, the more your angle opens up. I love the angle for Gannon. Get that disc over to the right as soon as possible with something that is definitely going to hyzer back. Using the fairway, that's really all you can ask, ask for here. Get past that big tree in the middle. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, wow. Late flip, but I'm not sure he's no, aiming no. for that gap. No chance. I can't imagine. That's just too technical. And there's all the open airspace. Um, also not what you're typically looking for, but that'll be fine. He'll still have a shot into the green for yeah, way be, back there. I think he's probably in the 400 neighborhood. Nate just goes muscle big, boom daddy two piece McNugget right <laughs> over all that stuff. That was a big one. So he's going to be aiming for this golf green on the right. That'll be a good aiming point for him. And if he can skip <sighs> oh. over it, but this got flat quick, which actually probably won't be too bad. Yeah, it gets as far as the par goes. Yep, gets beyond the green. He's probably a hundred feet to yes. the basket. But there's that green you can see. If you can skip it off that, you're probably going to be in the circle, honestly. What you don't want is to hit the very top on the down slope. This is perfect. Yeah. That's it's not be, perfect, but it's as the hardest far as what you're tr trying to do with this hole is hit that upslope, which will take the speed off of that um, driver. Slow it down so you're not playing with that out of bounds. See if Nate can learn a little bit. Ooh, this is stally. This needs a spike down like that. Yeah. That would have been interesting to see the results if it had not hit the branches. Yeah, I'd like to think it was sharp enough that it would yeah. dig, but you never know. Yeah, I, I, th I think you're right. It's just you never know. Never quite know. And this is also kind of wide. Wide off the green and circling back, C2. Scary putt, though, especially yes, it is. for somebody like Gannon who fires it at the basket. I wonder what level of fear he, he actually has when he steps up to putts like that, as comfortable as he makes those putt seem with his proficiency. I think this is one of the only ones that he could show fear with because of how close the OB is. Oh, that's fearful. And there you go. Sir, that you know, was a hit. tentative release from Gannon, who yeah. that was not his zap. Nate from about 25. And a good effort, just not quite high enough. Appreciate that. Sit. Stop. Okay. Well, you got to try again. Absolutely. And I need the practice, it turns out, this, more, this afternoon. There you go, Mason. Okay. I see you, Mason Ford. Perfect start. Gannon missing the putt. Now he's tied at the top. Good opportunity to just slam one in there. Get the yeah, confidence back. Yeah. Honestly, when you get a little roll away like that and you missed a short one, you really have to hone in and, and get something going into the next hole. And a putt like that can really get you get you started. Yeah, I don't know if that was an intent from you or if that was just Paul calling that perfectly, but like it certainly looked like you hit that putt a little harder than you normally do, like a little frustration. Oh, maybe. absolutely. And just making sure I'm spinning it because so yeah. far I hadn't really been able to do that. Greg, super Ooh, inside. This looks like an early misrelease and well short. Hmm. Kind of gets me excited. Is it he does. Do make yeah, me I'm, I'm think. okay. I, I see you, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is foreshadowing. 
E- either that or it's awesome because we get to see not everybody park every hole. Yeah, which, right. Which does happen in this tournament, I promise. Occasionally people, yeah, they do make mistakes. I right. bet he lays this up just Yeah, to there's no way he runs this. <laughs> yeah, after yesterday he had too many close calls. Just chipped this one in close. That's a little hot. Yeah, Uh-oh. I don't like it. I don't like it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> the king. Oh, The king of the throw-in. Oh, Isn't it crazy how many he makes? The king sitting on his throne. <laughs> oh, I like that. It works. It kind of works. Casey. Lot to like about Casey's game. Yeah. Lot to like about his game, man. We talked about it a little bit yesterday. He's on Chase Card for good reason, man. He is playing some solid disc golf. Really honing in his own style. And I love when a player has a unique throwing and putting style. Casey is one of those guys. He's doing really well right now. Whale sacks are a unique grip accessory, handmade in the USA by fellow disc golfers like you. If you own a disc golf store, run a league, club, or tournament, whale sacks are the perfect addition to your players' packs, CTP prizes, or product to offer your customers. A portion of every sale is donated to save the whales. For wholesale pricing, visit whalesacks.com slash bulk to get yours. It's time to join the whale club. On to hole four, par four, 800 feet, going slightly downhill. This one's tough with the out-of-bounds lake on the left side, some OB lines on the right, some tough trees you don't want to get tangled up with. I think the best play is a huge straight backhand, and if you can get a little turn on it and fade it back left beyond the lake, then you have the option to maybe go big hyzer in the back door here, try to make birdie, but this is a pretty rarely birdied hole. If you take a look at that whole map on the side of the screen, I think you can tell why. A lot of out-of-bounds, a lot of distance. Mason would feel really good to start off with four straight birdies with how difficult hole four is. It's going to require a precise and lengthy shot from there. I do like the way he throws, though. If he does go after it, that's a shape that he he likes. The down the middle shape? Well, well, something that turns late. This is too high. Is this going to stall in the water? Yes. Oh, somebody go swimming in there, please. I've got two in there, and I would really like both of them back. Best case scenario, somebody goes in there for a germ's desk. Well, just <laughs> go try to find Gannon's and come back with mine. Here's Luke. Nice turn on Ooh, this. Over the top play is primo. Wow. That's yes. the best we've seen. Yes, yes. In the tracks, that might be awkward footing, which is... It is awkward footing. That's unfortunate. Such a great drive. Drawing the high stall forehand flex play. Not enough Anheuser, but not a disaster. Say it's in bounds. Yeah, that's close to that out of bounds line as it hit, though. It is a it bit looked, close yeah. on the other side of this little yes. road that I'm standing on. And then a little layup here. This is perfect layup. It looks like this hole doesn't seem like it's too difficult to par if you pick a safe spot off a tee and just accept it. It becomes very difficult as soon as you start getting greedy, though. Yeah. Very, very hard to birdie. So you really want to take this on the right side and drift it in, and it looks like he almost had the right height. Mm-hmm. He hit the gap, which is very um, tough to do. And that's a long look. Gannon, to try to save par, got to go high and around. Oh, I kind of like it. You do? I do. Okay. That's He's got so much power. To, that Yeah, a lot to like. Wow. It is really hard to make Gannon bogey. It, Disc yeah. golf holes have been complaining for more and more. Their cries are getting louder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They oh, think yeah. they've kind of done it. They think, oh, we got him in the lake. Nope. No. Luke trying to follow the same line Gannon just threw, and this one looks pretty tasty. That will be a look for the bird. Just got to get this putt a little bit higher this time, Nate. Channel your inner Barsby. Full Barsby. <laughs> uh, well. How many throw-ins do you think you get a year? Imagine Barsby's that aren't reaction putts. if he 
he did what you just did. <laughs> <laughs> it, it landing short and sliding up to the pan. Yeah. yeah. Shaking yeah. his head. Like, yeah. A wasted opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Because there's only OB. Like, they, there's tons of room. There's at least 20 feet of room behind the basket before you go down to OB. <laughs> so bombs away. Luke stepping up. Smooth birdie. Yeah, that's huge. This is, I mean, it's the hardest hole in the course, I think. So, yeah, I think it is. It's that's a really nice pickup. I would, so, I think this is the only, it's actually that, not even close. This is the only hole that I personally don't really see myself birdie. Mm -hmm. Every other hole I can imagine how that would happen. Yeah, 0. 0.42 over par average on the pro tour, not only on the pro tour, but on the cut field wow. in low wind. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty I mean, All those things together that says, yeah, I mean, that's a full-on Brad versus the Bruiser type hole. Yeah. All right, Casey White. We've been asking him for years to host the Casey White Open, and he won't do it. <laughs> Little forward roll. That was tricky. This looks so pretty with this five seed. Mm. Effortless distance right there. And that looks like that's going to crash to the backside. Actually, no, just right where that, that's in the, the big pocket of open space there. It's about as good as you can throw it without getting lucky. Casey's putter is hot today. That's already a third outside the circle putt that we've seen him drop. Two in the corner pocket. Not clean, but in. He'll take the birdie and move on over to this hole right here where we have Niklas Antela going the low line. We saw him do this in round two with great success, and it looks like he's done it again, this time a little short. Pretty high on the skip bounce. Maybe caught some limbs. Someday we're going to see him, Mason, Bradley, and maybe a Kale on a card. And we're all just gonna just film the round. <laughs> like <laughs> it's all... already filmed, but I'm gonna film it on my phone too. <laughs> I mean, it it might be the most beautiful round we've ever watched. <laughs> How many people were, were just tied for first? Did I just see like there was an Anthony Barella up there? Look out, Anthony Barella. Full five par three, three forty up this hill. Big spike hyzer for all these guys. A couple trees you need to watch out for. This one not really being one of them unless you early release it. But this short one comes into play a little bit. And there's a couple stragglers. One deep and a little bit on the right there. Early release it and you can get buried in the left rough as well. Watch out where you're stepping because there's cacti everywhere. And that's... Those are prickly and they hurt. <laughs> and you might get some owies. What? Did you guys have any... Yeah, it looks like you guys might have had a little headwind as well. A little bit. Paul and I on third card were feeling a little bit of that headwind. Our card did it pretty good. We we went one over on the on the entire card on hole five. Oh no! Everyone had to make putts, make putts for par. Not everybody made it. <laughs> it wasn't great. No. <laughs> that was great. I like how you just ratted us all out, but uh... you're welcome, dude. It was on the Power Disc Golf Academy hole, too. I'm going to have to go back and <laughs> <laughs> rewatch some of your old tutorials. Exactly. Again, Again, going this super looks high. Great. Going for sky great. shot. Not oh. as sky sh as uh, we saw Barella go in round two, but just as effective. A little bit of an ace run. Ooh, we get a fall of light. Yeah, if he has 10 more feet, that's right in the bottom of the bucket. Great angle. And nothing can stop that from doing that. Very satisfying to watch it go through the bucket right there, even though it's short. Just, if you didn't watch round two, go back and watch Anthony Barella's hole and look at the fall of flight line. It's a vertical up and down. It kind is of, so cool. Kind of like this one. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty bad. Too low. Get through? In a tree. I hit the same tree, Nate. Frustrating for sure, because I'm already playing bad, and then I thought, well, surely I'll get hole five. We'll kind of get this thing mm -hmm. going. Well, it's not done yet. Zoom. Well, it's a run. Let's say that. Hey, you know? It wasn't low. Barsby hey. would have been proud. <laughs> Good effort. 
Mason. Mm. Oh, Ooh. that is a slight kink in the armor. Oh, no. It was at this moment when I realized I wouldn't be hoisting the trophy today. Foreshadowing. Oh, Luke with a good little putt there. Hey, you know what? Bogey start, birdie, birdie, birdie. Pretty dang good to be two under through this stretch. That's probably on average. Yes. For uh, the rest of the field. Absolutely. Luke showing off that he borrowed Gannon's mini there. I'm sure he's probably not typically a mini user, but needed one in that particular instance. Gannon being a good guy, he is. Let him borrow it. And they got to share birdies with it. Let's take another look here at Niklas Antela Thank onto goodness. hole eight. Going to show us another low line turn. Oh, sleepy, sleepy. Oh, my goodness. Calm down, young fella. Wow. Oh, seriously, calm down. Such a good line. Yeah. Just three feet lower and it's parked. I was just saying in the Doesn't last matter, though. coverage oh, that man. we aren't used to seeing him miss all those putts from about 40 feet. And then all of a sudden, we get a little couple check-ins. Yep. And he's making those. Jam, jam. With that birdie, Gannon now ties Niklas and Anthony Barella, who's out there on a shredder right now. Hole six, par three, 445 feet. There is this low gap, but it's not workable at all really for reaching the MPO pin. You can see the FPO pin there. That's probably possible to go underneath. As Paul said, I mean, it's over under this tree for some reason. I, I haven't I haven't really heard it said better. It's a, a tricky one to reach. You wanna just go big stall hyzer, ideally just short of all those cedars and set up maybe 30 footer. Yeah, the crash play is kind of fun, but you never really know where it's going to finish. This might be looking for that crash play if Josh could ever find it. Hmm. Just <laughs> Stuck in a tree? <laughs> you know, I don't... I think one of the problems with a, with a hole like this is Gannon tries a, the crash play as well. Let's we'll see if he feels the same. Yeah. He does. Perfect. Uh, is... Over there behind the basket, that's not the green. That's the circle. And if you throw it there... You're you, laying up. And you can't make it, that's not hitting the green, in mm -hmm. my opinion. That's hitting the circle, sure, and you have to putt it a certain way. Sure. But that's not necessarily hitting hitting a green. And, I, I'm and I think if we, if we change that narrative, then all of a sudden these things might not bother people as much because you have to hit the green, which is left side of that shrubbery, and short. Maybe 40 feet short is, is actually the green. Statistically, it's no worse than missing like a wide open 15 footer. It still shows up as a missed putt inside the yes. circle when you had no chance. Exactly. Nate, you just got to get something going here. Couple over yeah. through six. and I mean, he's got chances. If Barsby was thrown from your lies, you'd be like three under. At least. <laughs> at, least. <laughs> at least. I've had a couple birdie chances. Haven't been able to put them away. The thing is, the back nine does open up a little bit for some players. And See, that's a tricky putt. I would say that he would have missed the green there because you have to manufacture like a new way to get there. Now sure. this right here, regular putt, that's hitting yeah. the green in my opinion. A little off to the left. So you would set, you would like to see it painted in like an irregular shape. Yeah. And then the stats keeper would know, is exactly. it on the green or is it yeah, not? Yeah, and if you're inside 30 feet, sure, you're not allowed to jump forward, but you can still hit the green. Like 40 feet for Gannon is, yeah, is sure. no problem. Yeah, it's on the green. Yeah. Great birdie from Gannon. Yeah. I've I've been trying to push this one for years, but I've, I've been saying 45. If it's just a wide open hole, the circle should just be 45 feet. I think it's closer to 15 meters, which was actually 49 feet, but something around well, that no range. No jump. No jumping inside that range because we're all putting in that range. Nobody needs to jump from there. They just do because they can. Here's a check in with our current leader. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Okay. Over Anthony. On 16. Yeah, that's a big time fa flash forward check in. Keep it going, Anthony. Trying to make it back to back wins. And these guys got a lot of holes to play, but 
if you can get the last two, always posting a score is extremely important. The 2024 Prodigy Signature Series are here. The Signature Series explores the evolution of flight. Get yours March 22nd on ProdigyDisc.com and at your local retailer. Well, yeah, one of the things that we uh, maybe you saw there on that flashback with the or the flash forward with Anthony was a little interesting color. That color denotes an ace on a hole 11. Yeah, the skip in. Skip in ace. Just two rounds after he was throwing a drive that would have been 100 long, hit the trees and ended up bullseye. This time he just skips into the chains for the ace. So that's a part of the story behind why he is putting together such an awesome run. Again, it's super high with this one, getting some turn on it, drifting back and absolutely parked. Whoa, that is the high stall that you're looking for. We get to see this one again. As good as you can throw it, and that's the way yeah, you do it. It's perfect. Stall it right on top of the basket. It takes all of 550 foot of, of power to throw the stall shot, something that is almost coming, it's not coming backwards, but it's kind not, of going sideways. Yeah, barely moving forward yeah. anymore. Easy to catch. It's a shot that Luke throws very well, and this is if this is high enough, this I like this a lot. See, but it just wasn't high enough. Yeah, and that wasn't exactly a stall shot. It, that was penetrating forward. So if that we see that come into the green, it was probably had a little more oomph. And this was an interesting oh. line trying to go full turnover. Oh wow! It actually fights back pretty well, and. A downhill, yeah. wide open look from 50, yeah. 47. Yeah, something like that. And you're trying to match Gannon's line? No, more Luke, I think. Okay. More Mason. More uh, my you own. That's, my my, own I, that's a Nate line I'm right doing there, my baby. my own thing. That's creative. This is a horrible start. Yeah, not not I what you need. Don't appreciate watching it again. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the hardest thing to do in disc golf. That's solid. Oh. Uh, that would have been sub spicy. Yeah, it would have. Yeah, I I think. Yeah, that was what I wanted. I, I expected it to like dig in the hill. Watching my own poor performance is the worst thing in the sport of disc golf. Isn't that kind of cool that we get to watch ourselves though on a lead yeah. card? Yeah, that's, that that part that, is that cool. Part is that's what crazy. I was trying to rem remind myself during this what, terrible stretch. What a privilege! Yep. Here's Mason. Yeah. Drop. Little leaky on the left side, just like hole five. Good effort though. Yeah. That's a scary putt. You can't give it the full go because mm -hmm. of the hill behind it. You can, but. You just never really do. Yeah, not everybody's like Gannon. <laughs> wow, bowing for 21 footers. Uh, <laughs> We've gotten gotta there, get, huh? Yeah, got to <laughs> let the people know. Sometimes you hit one just perfect. They, I, I knew they were in my corner. They didn't want to see any more misses. That was a nice presentation. But honestly, you're at a place right now where, where you you can't afford any more bogeys obviously and you need to get some birdies coming down the stretch because you do have uh, a chance to have a very good finish still yeah absolutely like you're so far ahead with what you've done so far that you net five six seven birdies coming in you can count that as a really good tournament certainly but you got to do that again and recaptures the lead at 32 under Anthony needs to birdie 18 to have any hopes, but it's so it's not it's not gonna happen probably. But a podium finish very possible. Yeah, that's possible for sure. Hole eight, par three, 400 and a foot. A big forehand turnover with a late finish stable, or a turnover down the middle like we saw Conrad the other day when he based it. Yeah, or Nicholas like we just saw. Just like Nicholas threw it. Again, it's going to try to channel one of those guys. That low oh, wow. flexor. This is going to skip up great. the hill. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Force over. Jeez Louise. 
Too easy. Yeah, easy does it. I love that line. Especially when it's thrown like that. I really think that this is a shot that if you can get dialed on the Pro Tour, you can go a long what, ways. What can you not do if you can throw exactly. that shot? Yeah. But not a lot of people really have great command over it. Mm -hmm. It's because it's common, a hard shot to throw. More common with the forehand to have kind of that low flex control. Correct. Luke's kind of showing off that same line. Little Very limb good. slowed it down, but just enough to be pin high perfectly just outside the bullseye. That was a great shot for Luke. Mason would love to get back on that birdie train. He's going with the mid-range, very underststable, hoping to drift it back, but it is not drifting. This there's a golf could find the here, green, but he comes up just okay. short of it. And again, he's going to have an open yet very scary downhill look from 50 plus. I like it. A lot to like, I think. Minus that. Oh, uh, oh, one of those rounds. Well, I'd say that's categorized under not cool, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not cool, dude. But this could be cool. This could be cool. It's very cool. <laughs> Great birdie. Deserved the bird. Gets the birdie. Got it just over the rim right there. And that'll erase one of your bogey strokes. One at a time, right? Absolutely. I'm no, I'm no Barilla. I'm not checking them off by twos. <laughs> Mason going to pay the price. And that really puts a halt to that early perfect start. Yeah, and we're coming up on nine holes where things are getting tight. Running out of holes. Who has command? Great birdie from Luke and Gannon as well. Gannon has really put together a good front nine. Six under now. Oh, get in there. Hole nine is a downhill par four, 759 feet with a mandatory on the right side, OB line on the right side as well, and then the OB road on the left. Golf green here to punish a huge drive, so you have to be a little bit careful about your landing zone, and then a very tricky green with these little canals next to the basket. A lot of players are testing this kind of inside line that the drone is going right now but you also have the option of playing the forehand around, especially if you find yourself on the left side of the fairway with your drive. I think this is my second favorite hole on the course. Yeah, it's, it's a good, again, it's a great distance. It, it sets you up for this big opportunity to go huge off the tee if you'd like, but you don't need to. Gannon almost goes too far, which is pretty crazy when you play the hole. Getting near that green requires every bit of 550. Yeah, he threw that pretty right uh, and was worried about hitting those trees on the right but did not connect with any of them and yeah it got big power Ooh, this needs to flip nate uh, this one's i think pushing it's, over towards that left side yeah it's not what he wanted i can i can't imagine but a good angle for the forehand if he chooses to go for it if not he's got that straight mid-range play which is kind of dicey going through the trees it's going to finish off to the right side Makes the forehand approach that you want to go with a little trickier. Yes. Were you simple? Uh, I was just going to say that he's he's a bit right, and it's going to make his forehand approach a little bit trickier. Every shot Mason throws, it doesn't matter what disc, it they all fly like flippy mids. Some just <laughs> some of them just go five hundred, <laughs> but they all just kind of stay in their lane Love and like that. late turn, and it's just like every one of them is a flippy rock but some of them are speed 13. 
Yeah. It's fun to watch. Luke is going to go that force over flex wide. Looks like he's got the height right. Looks like he's got the distance right. Yeah. Perfect Deal. shot. So tough. And the thing is, you can't see the basket from there. You might be able to see the flag poking above the hill, but that is, for all intents and purposes, blind as far as distance goes. A lot of trust goes into that shot right there. Same with this one. It's going to leave you with a really fun 40-footer coming down the hill. Yeah, I wanted to run that around the corner a little bit more. It's a tough shot, though, like we were saying, from that right side. Uh, you can't really... You can't, <laughs> it's a bit I would, tricky. I would have to... Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> tricky. You'd have to go... You'd have to be willing to risk Ooh. this. Deal. And the thing is, if you do risk that side and you hit the tree and you go in the water, like we mentioned in round two, that disc's most likely gone forever. It's very deep in that water, and nobody's going swimming for you. A little zoomy sidearm doesn't get the ground plate yeah. either. That's going to require a textbook zapper. Oh, oh, well, look at this thing doing it. Well, hmm. That yeah. shot was pretty good. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that helped hurt. If that help hurt? Yeah, which one helped or hurt? Oh, okay. Nate, I love it. Let's go. There it is. Back to back. Now the putter's warm. Yeah, that tree bit. keeping you honest on the right, just keeping it straight. You can't really hyzer that one in. Gave me a chance to make that classic disc golf joke that you can't resist making where you go, guess I'm just putting them too close, eh? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh, guess I'm getting a little too close to the basket. If I'm just a little farther away, I'm making them. I feel like I've heard about 100 people say that, including myself. <laughs> Oh, Gannon. Needed a bit more zap to it. And Luke will pick that one up. Decent front nine salvaged after the three putt bogey on hole one. Do you guys like the upside down tap in? I, no, I don't like it. I don't like the turbo tap-in. I don't like any tap-ins that aren't drop-ins or normal putts, personally. a lot of people do it. Yeah, what is the thinking there? I don't know, but let's take a look at Kyle Klein here on the par 5 10th off the tee, trying to avoid going left, and he just goes straight and low, and that is perfectly fine. Uphill run-up, favored by people who aren't my size. This is crushed. Yeah, that should be a pretty routine approach. I'd say he's inside the 200 mark, maybe 215. And he's been really showcasing that forehand approach with the tactic all week. Really for the last couple of years, it's been a, a go-to for him. And that's about as routine as it gets right there, folks. Over to 11 with Antela. Hmm, where is this going to go? Could it ace, just like Anthony? No, runs Fortunately, long. we do not have film of it. I think it was filmed by somebody's camera. But we don't have that coverage. Oh, man. You remember the putt Niklas hit on this whole round yes. two? Yes. From the knee, big turner. Willing a couple birdies there on 11 for Niklas. Good front nine. Good first 11 for Niklas. Seven under through the first 11. Yeah. What is he? He's one back right now of Gannett. Absolutely. Luke also right there. Chris Dickerson making a great push at 10 under on his round. Yeah, and looking at the leaderboard, there is a lot of people within three to four strokes, but unlike other years so far through nine holes, it's not really jumbled up with like six, seven people right there. Mm, and yeah. You know what I'm saying? When we were over at the other course, it seemed like you have those fast starts, so there's at one point like 16 people within one stroke of the lead. Yeah. Let's see if that keeps trending on the back nine. Thanks to the Founders Club, we've got just nine more holes left to see who's going to win this first Elite Plus event of the year. Come back and join us. <laughs> 